Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna lay the foundation for serving files from our file server. So something you might build a web application, or you have a web application and you're gonna have things like images, JavaScript file, other HTML files that don't change, your cascading style sheets and other thing, right? Your videos, whatever. And those things don't change often. And so the, the way you serve those up is gonna be slightly different than how you're gonna serve up um, things that um, are more dynamic and so so far we just have dynamic routes and so we're gonna start looking at how we can serve up things like images so today we're gonna add a photo wall or just a page that lists photos really and so that's gonna be the foundation for when we add multiple images how we're gonna serve those up because those are gonna be images that don't really change often we can add images but the one image once you put it there it doesn't really change so that's why we're just gonna it's just gonna be a file server so how are we going to go about adding um, our photo wall so first we're gonna copy what we did and we're gonna start off exactly where we left off and we're gonna copy our um, home page because that's the most dynamic page and we're gonna create a new page called photo wall and we're gonna paste our own page content there and edit it and basically what we're gonna do our photo wall is we're gonna use a table HTML element to lay out our photos at first we're gonna use several um, columns but just for testing we're gonna create this table that just list this exact same thing that our we are providing to our own page, which is just our favorite things. And just that's just to make sure that we can create this new route in our application. Once we have that created, on our main program, we have to add the new route, which we can call photos. And then we're gonna have a handler, which we're gonna, again, we're gonna copy the home page handler, rename it to photo page handler. Of course, we have to look up the right template. And then if we build and rerun it, and of course test it, our new road works. But of course it's showing the contents from our favorite things from our own page in a table. Well, now we wanna go back and make this actually look like a table for our um, photos. And so we're going to add, like I said, multiple columns. And then now we're gonna say, assuming that we had for our page object that we're gonna to pass to the template, photos and then when we list iterate over photos what we have is a photo and a photo structure gives you information about where that photo is can be fetched the date some information about that photo like date and notes and that's how we're going to pretend that how we're going to have this photo wall that we can include a whole bunch of additional information like where it was taken who's in the picture all this other stuff um this is just an idea i'm giving here so i don't add all of that now we go back to our code and we need to modify a few things. Of course, the page, we can't use the same page. So we're gonna rename page to home page and have the home page use that. And then we're gonna create a struct for our photo wall. And of course we said we're gonna have a photo struct and then a photos page struct, which is just a slice of photos. And so if we go back, we can see that oh, again, just the photo struct and then the photo page struct. And then of course we create a variable um, that is a point that has a pointer to a photos page object and we pass that to our wall. And we can go back and test that if we like. But what we're gonna do is prepare some data now. And so we could generate the data dynamically from within our application. But what I'm gonna do is create a JSON file. And JSON is used widely on the web for web application, exchanging data between web application, like the front end and the back end. So this is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a JSON file here and put some sample data in it. Now, one way to think of this is in a few sections before, we look at how to generate JSON data. Um, so if you just generate some data and write it out to a file, this is what you'd get, especially if you use the photos, um, you know, photos page object and you try to populate that with um, two or three photos object this is exactly what you're going to get you're going to see that oh it isn't one photo object is going to be represented by that data in the blue there and the second one is going to be represented by this set of data and notice there's just um curly braces to represent a object and come up between it 
And then when you wanna show an array, well, this is what an array look like. Um, so it says um, photos. Now, why does it have the name photos? That's because our photos page object has a field called photos, which is an array or a slice of photos. All right, moving on, let's go back and see if this works. Well, in order to see if this works, we have to read the data in from our JSON file. So if we use the IOUtil read file um, function and we give it the name of our JSON file, it's gonna return the byte and an error. We check and make sure that we don't have a problem reading our data because if we can't read the data, then we're gonna quit because we don't wanna be able to go to people to go to our photo wall and not have nothing to display. And then the next thing we're gonna do is um, use JSON on Marshall which is to decode JSON. But we don't create a decoder because we're just doing this once, so we don't want to go through the effort of creating a JSON decoder. You want to create a JSON decoder encoder if you're going to use it multiple times. And then um, after that, we just write it out, um, decode it, and say decode the bytes or the data we read from our file, JSON file, into this page object. Of course, we have to pass a pointer to a valid page object or some object that JSON know how to read. And JSON is gonna get cues from our data type, which is pages. It's gonna look and see, oh, there's a field there that's got photos with a, and it's an array, and it's gonna go in a JSON object and just decode it. So now, if now that we have this, we should be able to go back, our template looks okay, go back, compile our program, and run it again, and see if we can generate a table with um, you know, some photos. And there it is, there's our date and our strings, but for our notes, but our picture is not showing up. Well, that's because we don't really have any pictures to begin with. So let's jump in the web and go look at some pictures that we can get offline. Now, I'm not taking credit to these pictures. I said I'm going to get them off, off the web. So if you go search for pictures, make sure that all, you know what rights are associated with getting pictures on the web or whatever. And so anyway, I get the URL for the pictures and I put them back in our JSON file. And when I rerun my program, now you can see the picture is loading on our data, but it's way too big. So um, remember, I'm not gonna go through the details of HTML because um, you can learn it out of places or you can look at my other course if you like. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an attribute for the image tag called width. And what it's gonna do is scale down the width of our application and also keep the ratio. So that's why I don't have to worry about specifying like the height. And so when I try 400, it was, it was too big, so then I used 200. And so now you can see our picture and the rest of the data. Now you can go ahead and start modifying anything now. I mean, our application is set, and the only thing is our application, if you refresh the page, it re reads the JSON file. So that's the only thing that really needs to change once we are happy with our template. Now if we change our template, we have to stop and rebuild our application. But once we change our, um, but once we are happy with it, we can just add data. So if we go back and find a third picture and add that to our JSON file, we can just um, put it in place and rerun our application, refresh our page, and we'll see that the data is gonna show up without us having to stop and restart our application. See, so I just rerun the, I just refresh that page. Now, um, while I'm gonna keep doing some other things here, again, this is just now modifying template, HTML template. So at this point, what I wanna show you, I'm finished showing you, and this is just me still playing around. So while I'm doing this, I just wanna say, like, thanks for your time. Um, in the next video, we're gonna look at how we're gonna serve up a number of images uh, so we don't have to pull it from a remote site because what we're doing now is pointing our, we have a URL pointing to a remote cell that's serving up the image, but we want to serve up our own images. So that's what we're going to do. And hence why we went through this exercise is to lay that foundation. All right. Thanks for your time again. See you in the next video. Um, appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up um, on the video. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Definitely spread the word. I really appreciate if you can do that. Um, and the first slide of this video, you saw, I don't know if you noticed, but there was the Instagram and um, Twitter handle. So I do have Instagram and Twitter handles for the new site that I'm building to launch um, more professional videos. The site is not ready yet, but I've started putting out some tweets. Um, not a whole lot, probably just three tweets by now. But anyway, I wish if you would follow me there. Um, so 
there you go Striversity and um, Striversity1 at Twitter is a Twitter handle and then Instagram is just Striversity S-T-R-I-V-E-R-S-I-T-Y okay take care see you in the next video um, have a great day bye